Hello and welcome to the Creative Opportunities Meeting hosted by For the Region. Today we're bringing together people from across South West Wales to talk about our creative sector and uh, the opportunities available in the creative industries for people and businesses here in South West Wales. This is part of a programme of monthly meetup events bringing together businesses, organisations and individuals who care about South West Wales and want to be part of conversations to break down silos and to emerge opportunities to collaborate, to work together for the greater good of our region. These conversations are interactive and hopefully engaging, and we really want to hear from everybody in the room. Uh, we want your news, your announcements, your updates, but also your ideas, and we want to co-create um, priorities and potentially collaborative projects to strengthen the sector um, and to join things up so everybody knows what everybody else is doing. At For The Region, we believe that the creative sector offers huge opportunities for people and businesses, and we're looking forward to hearing about some of those opportunities today and where there is a need for greater collaboration and for more initiatives and projects to strengthen the sector. Hopefully, we'll talk about some of those ideas in today's meeting. With a number of new creative networks establishing themselves across our region and a range of events and other opportunities for people, businesses and organisations to get involved and connect with each other, this is an exciting time for the creative sector. So let's get into the conversation. And the first question we asked was, why does this topic feel important? And we'll hear from some of our members and collaborators now. It's 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 very special that it's about creatives, and um, I'm here because I want to hear more about um, developments and project projects, initiatives in the region, and how that can create opportunities. Um, well, for growth or to connect with other people and uh, entities, um, and to eventually be um, to be part of of a wider community. Because uh, it can be um, a very lonely place sometimes, just on your own. So yeah, this this is why I'm here today. I'll, I'll say the one thing that I, I say all the time that really no one and certainly no business succeeds on its own. It, you just don't because for a start you need clients <laughs> as much as anything. Um, but 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 you know we all we all feed off of each other. You know, and I, I'm not you could say we're in the we're accountants uh we're not creative accountants <laughs> but, but but you know we still feed off of other accounting businesses within the sector but we you know we thrive off of relationships with solicitors with banks with development bank of wales with the local council with with some of the other people on here with mark was just in in my room it, it, you know you don't achieve anything on your own and 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 understanding what's going on out there understanding what the challenges are understanding how other people face those challenges learning from each other is a fundamental part of being a successful business i work in sustainability so i'm all about building up circular economy systems and donating our resources from production directly into local communities where we work so for me it's all about connecting with people connecting with creatives and community groups and building up these networks to enable us to be able to share resources essentially so great to be here for me I, I mentioned in our room that I am very driven by the right hand side of my brain even though I haven't worked officially in a paid capacity in the creative sector for many a year but as a leadership specialist and trainer and facilitator one of the things that often comes my way when I'm commissioned is getting innovation right within companies, generating an attitude of creativity, of thinking outside of the box. And I sometimes wonder if by calling ourselves a sector, we're almost marginalizing the right-hand side thinkers. And if, for example, Gus and, you know, a company of accountants, when was the last time you worked out who were your right side of the brain thinkers at whatever level they are? How can we bring creativity in whatever form into our working practices to drive more effective, higher productivity and mentally happier workforces? 
That's such an important message. Thanks for bringing that in. You know, the creative sector uh, applies to everyone and and we all need creativity, whatever line of business we're in. Um, so, yeah, how can we untap that creative potential in ourselves, in our businesses, in our teams? Thanks, Kim. Uh, Dan, yes, why does this conversation feel important to you? Uh, well, networking was a big thing within our group, so which I think has been uh, spoken about before. But I think really, for me, it's just to start shouting about creative entrepreneurs, um, artists, um, video artists, podcasters, all those kind of things. Um, and just to really just start to show that artists aren't just walking around with a flat cap and a dog on a string asking for money, that we can actually generate income. You know, we can generate a lot of private income. We can create businesses and be sustainable. Um, involve everyone else again. No one is an island. I mean, obviously, we all we all have to work together. And I think the beauty of Swansea and West Wales is we're more prepared to do that. I think the further west, the further east you go, you kind of you get everyone sees each other as competition. But I think Swansea West and uh, and, and West and over to Carmarthen and and Ceredigion, I think the idea of collaboration, working as a community just makes us stronger and it's going to make us be able to shout about the the creative cultures internationally. Do you know what I mean? Shout about how good we are, how much money we can make, how creative we can be and how good we are as a sector then or not as a sector without marginalising ourselves. I'm also really keen in us shouting about how amazing the community is and us just understanding the breadth and, and depth of it so that we can um, encourage students to come here, young people to come and study, but also to stay and work in this sector. And, uh, you know, and I think in sharing the breadth of what we do, that's part of that job of trying to make young people realise there's a future for themselves here. And also then from our perspective, how can we support that, you know, either through what we teach or how we connect with you guys, you know, in industry to create those opportunities for internships and experiences while students are here, you know, in that aim to kind of just try and keep them here and help them see themselves as part of that future. Yeah, it comes up a lot on these calls, keeping talent here in our region and uh, helping people to recognise the opportunities to build flourishing careers here on our doorsteps in South West Wales. Thanks, Sean. Rory, I'd love to hear from you. Why does this conversation feel important? Former and perspective as one's a uni student. Um, I'm a uh, physics student, and so this conversation, it's sort of, uh, in the sort of science fields and in all these um, things, how creative media is used to sort of spread the various things that we all kind of learn about and need to know and all these various projects and things globally that happen and um, the progress they kind of cause, the creativity and how that's used to then put it out into the world is so critical in getting the message across and getting people on board to get it away from being just like a small marginalised group of a few experts who maybe don't know how to communicate things very well or don't know how to express things very well and getting the masses kind of involved in what can happen um yeah yeah that's so important isn't it the importance of creativity for storytelling and for um shining a light and communicating or the really interesting stuff that people are doing in different fields uh, and as has already been mentioned the importance of creative talent in any field uh, and science included. Thanks, Rory. Nigel, why is this important to you? Um, it's important to me because um, people see us as, you know, Bauer Media, this big um, international European media company um, overtaking or taking over the local media. But so we employ local people and local creative talent within each local area that we own. And if you've driven past Scout and, and you've seen the wave building disappear and the signs come down, Fear not, Lee and Claire, the breakfast crew, are back from our purpose-built studios, which we built in Clans Hamlet up in Swansea, in the Enterprise Park, from Monday. And this is kind of like if you're in the business and you want to find out and you want to see our new studios, drop me an email in the chat and come in and have a chat and see what we're doing. Uh, we've invested a massive amount of money into local uh, you know, creativity and uh, local radio. In fact, we're expanding it across... 15 extra DAB transmitters. So it now serves the whole of South Wales from mid-April. So uh, so it is about growth and expansion, and we want to put that back into it. And you've noticed from us, we are changing our name slightly, so it's no longer going to be the wave. And we're reflecting who we are. So it becomes, uh, it becomes uh, Hits Radio South Wales. 
nice to have you on the call and yes you know creating those employment opportunities uh in radio and uh, elsewhere in the sector and amplifying all the businesses that are doing great stuff in our region uh in the creative sector thanks so much for that so that's uh, a great way to kick off the call uh thank you for those who've shared your thoughts hopefully in your breakout room discussions um you connected around uh, that sense of purpose it's about um keeping talent here creating good jobs and opportunities for businesses to thrive amplifying the great stuff that's happening building the reputation of our region as a creative hotspot opening up creativity for everyone and the role that creativity plays in telling stories about uh, what we do and our places and our businesses um, to really help us connect and reach out. The next question that I am going to invite you to consider is I'm going to ask really, what are you excited about? Um, so we're here to talk about creativity in Southwest Wales. So I would really love for everyone to have a think about one positive thing that's happening in Southwest Wales's creative and cultural sector or creative economy um, that you would like to highlight for the group. Tilly, thanks for going first. What are you excited about? We've just launched through Media Cymru Sustainability Coordinator Training. It's the first programme of its kind in the UK. And we're developing this training programme all about ways to weave sustainable production across all departments of, of film and TV. So it's open to anybody in Wales to apply. I'm so excited about it because it's so badly needed to have someone on production on the ground for every single production being made in Wales. And again, pushing for those uh, teams and budgets. So if you are interested or know anyone that might be, uh, I do uh, recommend that they look at the course and potentially apply. We're looking for some uh, really great candidates and it's a brilliant opportunity. Um, Tilly, talk a little bit more broadly um, from your perspective about opportunities in the kind of film and TV sector. Is it true that all those opportunities are in South East Wales? Uh, what's happening in South West Wales? Is it an opportunity area for people in our region? It's something I'm really conscious of. Certainly with Seven Screen, we do try to move all across Wales. We did Pembrokeshire Murders up further in the northwest and um, sort of up that, up that part of the coast. And also uh, Steel Town Murders based obviously in Port Talbot uh, last year. So we do move around wherever we can. Um, I've just been on a Martin Clunes drama filming across Mid Wales uh, at the end of last year as well. So we, the reason for that is not only to make the most of the beautiful landscapes and so on, um, and also tell those local stories on screen, but also, of course, to, to inject that economic spend as far and wide across Wales as we can. It's something we're really conscious of. And doing what I do in terms of sustainability, it's not just the environmental sustainability, it's also the social and economic sustainability of Wales as a whole. My name is Amina, I work at Italias and I'm the community engagement coordinator there. But I also run a, a CIC in Swansea as well, Creative CIC, so here with two hats on. But um, Tilly, I'd love to chat to you more if possible. We've been making our own documentaries at Italias for the last two years, trying to shine a light on local stories and hidden voices. So it'd be really great to talk to you. We've got lots of young people and older people in the community that really love to work in TV. Um, and it does feel often that that is out of reach or the pathways aren't clear. I think um, we probably all know that, that, you know, working in that sector, it's not like you just go online and apply for a job. But um, you know, we'd love to try to sort of forge better links um, and obviously for our film students as well. Um, the thing that I was excited about that I'd like to just mention is um, Halliess and um, the last year and a half with Elysium have been um, running something called the Swansea Young Musicians Network. Um, based, it was kind of born out of realizing that young, stu young students and young people in the city don't really know where to go to get help, to get gigs and to progress. So we've been providing spaces for them to do gigs. We've been giving them mentoring and support. And we've now got, um, you know, we've grown, we've got the bunkhouses on board and the arena and lots of other uh, projects within Swansea, but also outside of Swansea as well. So we're partnering up with Anthem and Beacons in Cardiff and also um, Montedowie Arts. And um, it was one of those things where you're kind of like, I hope this is working. 
<laughs> the young people are getting something out of it. Um, but we had a conference a couple of weeks ago at Taliesin and invited lots of the young people to come. And they were all just like, oh, it's really, really super helpful and been a real catalyst in their career. So, yeah, really pleased that that's going so well. And if anyone wants to get involved or is interested to find out more, please let me know. Hello, guys. Um, so first time on this on this forum. Uh, so I work for a training St. David and we've got a little project up outside of Johnstown where we've got uh, a large uh, yurt in a beautiful setting, uh, views of the Towie and the local countryside. And it's just a beautiful space for, for creative act, um, activities. Um, so um, I'm excited about the possibility of getting creative people through uh, and into this project, um, be that um, workshops or performances it, it really doesn't matter to me just as long as uh, our space here is used for um well it, it's a wellness space really it, it's a place which is supposed to sort of contribute to your sense of engagement with nature so i think anything which sort of chimed in with that in terms of um art or creativity would be extra good please Thank you. you know get in touch yeah. Lovely. Thanks, Andrew. Yeah, great to hear about uh, new potential venues and spaces uh, for creative happenings. Um, I have recently started working um, in the cultural um, services department in um, Swansea Council. And um, uh, I'm kind of excited that Swansea Council is really um, kind of taking um, a big sort of leap into emphasising more the creative industries and creative sectors in, in Swansea. Um, and as a, a sort of a musician and creative person myself, you know, I, I really kind of welcome that. Um, yeah, so yes. I'm Finos and I'm from Viekin um, in Carmarthen and we've got a film festival. Um, so it's the, our first face-to-face -face film festival. We've done one online during COVID um, and there's a competition as well for filmmakers to enter their film. So it's an adventure film festival and it's over three days. Um, and it's in March, and I have popped the link in the chat. So if ever, anybody's interested in hearing more or wanting to enter a film or know a young person or a filmmaker that would like to enter a film, um, please, please uh, connect. I'm excited uh, that we're having this conversation. Have, we haven't had a creative meeting for a while. Um, we've also always in a really privileged position at For the Region to hear about exciting opportunities. And recently we went to the launch of a new creative network called Catrev Creative, which I think we have some um, people on the line might have join us and talk about that later. Um, I know that... Um, University of Wales or Ireg, and so Linos might be able to touch on this, have been given um, some funding from Creative Wales to create, um, to look at a creative network where they touch on um, animation, film and music. Um, so Keen, if Linos wants to tell us a bit more about that or someone from Trinity St. David, that would be exciting as well. Um, and Kim, who had to leave, also told us what she was excited about was um, the introduction of um, Precious Plastics Project, which um, has been launched in Glenetley, which again, I was really chuffed that she mentioned that because again, it's one of our For the Region members, James Dovey, that's been driving that project forward. And we're keen, I think it was launched on the 12th of February. So well done to James. And um, that's a really exciting thing for the city of Plymouth, uh, the town of Plymouthly and Carmarthenshire as a whole. Yeah, and it's interesting in Plymouthly and other places around our region where we're seeing uh, creativity at the heart of kind of regeneration endeavours and the uh, breathing life back into our town centres and high streets uh, through creativity. Um, and that Precious Plastics project is an example of that in Llanethly and also Pop-Up Wales uh, represented on the call here today, trying to find meanwhile uses for vacant spaces across our high streets, uh, ideally to bring creative enterprises uh, back into town centres. Uh, and that really helps to make places that people want to be, which is so important. Um, Sky, nice to see you. I'd love to hear what you're excited about. Hi, um, so she actually stole mine. I was also excited about Cartridge Creative, <laughs> um, but I'm also in Finesse and we are developing a creative arts space. It's a multi-purpose space that's hopefully going to be used for a gallery, workshop, um, maybe art markets. 
we have a lot of vision for the space. It's in its renovation process right now. Um, but James Owen from Story Cymru is in our building and we love him and everything he's doing with Cartriff Creative. Um, and we're just excited to be here and be involved with the creative happenings in South Wales. So, With our pro uh, project at Focus Futures, we're trying to encourage self-employment, right? Giving people the opportunity to start their own business, whether it's a, a sideline, side hustle. And I see oh, people talking about artists and things like that and the opportunities that we can give these people to sort of Get, and it's fully funded by the council. So we've got great opportunities for people with business advisors and everything, which will help, you know, fill in the application forms, give them the, the sort of expertise that they need to sort of grow a business as well. So, it, you know, I, I, I feel quite excited about the opportunity because my particular role is to sort of meet into the community and get to the people that perhaps don't know about the opportunities that are out there. You know, people like in, in students and all sorts of things, they just don't know ethnic minority groups. You know, there's so many people out there that could benefit from the services that we offer. And I'm just so excited that just, I can't get around enough people quick enough, you know, to tell them about it. So that's, that's well, you know, that's me. Super, thanks for bringing that into today's call. Yeah, all, all four local authorities um, and organizations across the four counties of Southwest Wales have business startup grants and support as Mark has outlined there. So it is, uh, there are huge opportunities if, if people are considering self-employment in the creative sector, um, connect with Mark on the call um, and uh, yeah, take advantage of those opportunities for the, all the support that you need. It seems to be a good time at the moment. There's, uh, there's a bit more money around in business startup support, which is uh, fantastic to see. My question really for you is what does a thriving creative sector look like and what benefits does it bring? So spend a few moments thinking about the impact we could have if we work together this year to highlight and strengthen our region's creative sector. And you might start your note taking with the prompt, if our creative sector was thriving, dot, 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 I might say, if our creative sector was thriving, it would be easy to find local designers and freelancers for creative projects. Uh, if our creative sector was thriving, what would that look like? Uh, what's, yeah, if what's our what creative you? sector was thriving, I, I wouldn't struggle so much to uh, find um, staff, commercial, commercially based staff to work for me. Uh, and, um, and I say that because we don't have the same issues around the rest of the country. So we don't have the same issue in Birmingham or in London or anything like that, but we kind of do have that same issue here. And it's, um, so, I, you know, we pay a good salary, we do all the other bits and pieces, we have great training and all those sort of things. But because the sector hasn't been thriving for a number of years, I would say, we don't have the talent pool in place anymore. So um, whereas if you, you know, and I found this, I used to run an animation studio myself for uh, you know, for about 10 years. So, uh, and I found out, and what you have to do is I had to move my studio to where the animators were. And uh, in those days it was in Birmingham. And, uh, and I found then what happened then was you have a thriving gaming industry and suddenly all the animation, all the animators that were animating kids stuff suddenly moved to the gaming industry. So you kind of, you, you, you the whole sector works. So I think if we were thriving globally, locally as a, as a sector, we wouldn't struggle to find uh, the staff and, I, I'm, and you know when you advertise for people I mean the last time I advertised for staff or creative staff I had um, 78 responses of which 17 were suitable to kind of put to an interview of which only seven came to an interview and kind of only two were worthy of a role so when you when you look at it like that those numbers are kind of you know not pathetic but they're but they're hard to believe in the economy we're allegedly living Thank you for bringing that perspective into the room, Nigel, and uh, I, I can totally resonate with that. Sometimes hard to find the right creative talent. I'm sure it's out there, but if our creative sector were thriving, that would not be so hard. Thanks for sharing. Leon, what would you like to share? Um, I, I would say in terms of uh, my, my, my assumption would be if if it was thriving, um, not being cliche, and obviously the slogan before the region is that the, the sector's working together. Um, you, you find... When, when when everyone starts sharing ideas and speaking exactly what 
what the what's going on here is like speaking between us. That's when stuff starts to thrive. Is again, if you go back to the point of trying to find staff, um, if you're going online and you're advertising, and yeah, we we I've advertised for staff, and you get mul- multiple candidates, but then. I could speak to speak to someone in this room that may may know a candidate, which may not have seen something that I put out on the internet. So working together and and build building relationships and, and connections, that's when stuff starts that I, I find works a lot better. And that's why I believe um so much in in staying local and speaking between each other. You you don't have to uh, put it all out there. We you you build the community, stuff starts to thrive, you build together. And may I may be in a part of the of a sector that um you you were doing better in, and we can learn from each other, and we can all come up together and help each other out, and that's when it all starts to thrive as a as a sector as a whole. Oh, I couldn't agree more. Thanks so much, Leon. Really uh, important words there. Thank you, Amina. If our creative sector was thriving, what would that look like? I think. T- yeah, I mean, I guess my response might be a bit more about how we get there, but I think um, you know, there's a lady earlier, I can't see her now on the screen, but was saying about, you know, people with different types of skills and different types of brains and, you know, to work together. But I think sometimes there are opportunities, but the creatives in the city don't always understand the language of the local authority or of the university or of businesses, and they've studied their art form but they don't necessarily know how to turn that into a business or turn that into something that's a commodity that's worth something. And I think there's a gap there where people need a bit of handholding and some support to understand the language of the corporate sector or of the local authority or of local, you know, local government. And I think if, if we want people to be able to take these opportunities, we need to put it in a language that people understand, I think. I don't know if that really answers the question, but you know what I mean. I think to get there, there's a gap. To um, touch on uh, what Amina was saying, um, yeah, there's a lot of there can be a lot of issues with sort of things like grants and the bureaucracy of the system that um, a lot of these projects and businesses can struggle with because it's very complicated in some cases, almost excessively so. And I think uh, a a big help would be. You know, focusing on like you know, government from a governmental perspective, making it a lot more accessible for them to be able to do it by changing how some of these these grants is the example I know of, but I'm sure it can spread into plenty of other areas of uh, the bureaucracy as well. But making that a lot more manageable and sort of reassessing things that have been established and maybe looking at ways in which they can be changed. It would be great to have specific areas, maybe in the, in the town where creativity thrives, for instance. Um, I think every town or city should have a creative quarter, in my view, uh, like the olden days in, in the urban. I think it, maybe the urban planning system needs to listen to that and take that into consideration because I think, um, I mean, at, at least here in Wales and Clonatli is quite poised for this kind of a reaction to urban planning where large disused buildings could become uh, hubs for creativity, all sorts of creative people coming together, and it'll sort of create a vibrant uh, place for co-creation, collaboration. I'm an architect and designer, and I, I find it quite difficult to uh, find other creative people. And I think um, you creative people need to engage with other people, and you can't sit in silos and by yourself in a studio. It sort of really <laughs> drowns you. So I think a common space in Swansea, in Cardiff, in Clarently, I think is is a must, and that will in itself create um, its own cre- you know c- creative economy, if you like. Just on the back of what the gentleman before me um, shared, um, <clears throat> if we had a thriving creative economy, I I believe uh, people in that industry will stop seeing each other as competitors and more as partners, collaborators. There'll be so much work and opportunity that we actually need each other's each other's expertise, experience, uh, but also kind of positivity, motivation, and encouragement. And that will who knows what that will create and what will come out of that. Uh, but I come across a lot of that fear. You, you go to meetings with creatives, everybody's a bit like on edge. Oh, is he going to take my opportunities, my clients? 
Um, and sometimes, believe it or not, that, that can happen. Uh, but yeah, if there is enough opportunity, if it's thriving, uh, there'll be less fear and that will unleash more creativity, more beauty. Oh, what a lovely message. Absolutely. And uh, well put there. Uh, the uh, the abundance mindset that generates a sense of opportunity for collaboration rather than a, a fearful sort of scarcity mindset. Thanks, Dean. And Gitty, I know you're late joining the call, but I'd love to bring you in I, from I'm Have a Hub. So sorry, everyone. I was really looking forward to seeing you. A hundred apologies, but it, I'm glad I came in at that point. Um, where the last speaker was saying about uh, the fear and um, you know the different venues. So here in Pembrokeshire, I started about a year ago a group called Venue Buddies, um, which is to make us all feel like collaborators and friends rather than competitors. And we all recognise that there will be certain dates that we're all putting things on, and that's not actually a problem because geographically you can have the distance. So you know it's only if you're doing it in the same town that it's a problem. So. Um, we're still we're not a public group yet, but we've got um, we've just been had a new venue buddy join, which is Saundersfoot Harbour. So we've got everything from a field where there's the Unearthed Festival through to cinemas. We're a, we're a hub in Haverford West as well, trying to do cultural things and creative things. Um, so if anyone wants to put anything on in Haverford West, please come to have a hub. Um, yeah, so that's really made a massive difference because the, the monthly meetings we have, we tend to share very candidly our worries. Um, a lot of creative entities have got exactly the same worries and stresses and pressures. So we're taking the approach that we can share and help each other. We can bail each other out or share equipment. It's um, And we've also put together a shared calendar for the venue buddy so we can all put down oh well we're doing a fest festival these dates and we tend to let each other know so that we're we're working together um and interestingly and i don't know if it's the same in the other counties but pembroke county council have just advertised two jobs to try and map and engage the creative industry so i don't know whether you've already covered that have you dawn um in this meeting um, uh, well, a bit, because Swansea Council have created a new role for the creation of a, a creative network here. So great to hear about that in Pembrokeshire. Oh, okay. I love the idea of um, collaboration within sectors rather than competition and how stronger we all are when we um, connect and collaborate with others who have the similar challenges, but also to co-promote what each other are doing and not to be too fearful of that. I think it's a huge opportunity there. And uh, yeah, we'll dig in and find a bit more detail about these new roles in Pembrokeshire County Council, because that sounds really progressive too. So thanks for bringing that into the room. Um, the purpose of these meetings is to share insight from across the region. And hopefully we've all picked up on the few things that we didn't know about before the call. Um, and I imagine that these conversations, as we group together every lunchtime on the third Thursday of each month, um, that the conversation will evolve and that uh, collectively our thinking will evolve. You know, we've, we've designated 2024 as the year of opportunities for South West Wales, and that's about amplifying opportunities as well as creating opportunities um, collaboratively and collectively across the region, across all our sectors and different interests and passions. Um, and I think this conversation will evolve month to month. Um, and as we go on this journey together, we'll figure out how best we can play our role to amplify and strengthen opportunities. Um, and hopefully more and more organisations and businesses and uh, initiatives will plug into this platform that we're seeking to create together um, to just share those little nuggets of insight uh, across South West Wales. And it's been spoken about a lot already today, uh, the importance of um, collaboration, connecting with others, networking and uh, being open to opportunities and possibilities. You never know who you're going to meet, who you're going to talk to, what idea is going to be sparked. Um, and hopefully today has been an example of that in action. But we have a couple of other quick things on our agenda. So I know we're tight on time. Um, and Lydia, I'm so sorry to keep you waiting, but can I hand over to you for our member moments? Yeah, no problem. Thanks so much. So uh, what we try and do each month is we just have a few minutes at the end where we have a little spotlight on three of our members at for the region. And they might be somebody uh, working in the same sector as you or a different sector. They might be bringing news about them or some specific news or 
maybe a good news story of collaboration. And we give them each just two minutes to share. So it's really strict. And I, I have a timer and I'm so mean in that regards. Um, but um, it's lovely just to hear uh, these uh, good news stories and what's going on. So first of all, I'm going to invite James Owen. Um, he's going to share for two minutes. So James is a BA filmmaking graduate who owns Story Cymru, a video production company based in Clinetley. He's a Welsh filmmaker and storyteller that helps brands across Wales share their story through film. James has a real heart for working across South West Wales, and I believe he's going to give us more of an insight to that now. So, James, if you wouldn't mind just unmuting yourself, and I'm going to start the timer. Thank you so much. Fantastic. Well, uh, good afternoon, everyone. And it sounds like Llanelli is the place to be, uh, certainly on this call. And uh, I became a member with Father Region about a year ago. And I wanted to find out what was going on in the region. I felt it was the best place to go to for news. And around the same time, when I became a member, uh, I joined a conversation with, with Dawn and Zoe about the need to establish a creative network. And uh, we've worked hard behind the scenes uh, as a steering group. There's a core six of us now uh, to develop the foundations of this new network. Uh, we wanted to look at what is the vision for this new creative network? Uh, what's the mission? Why does it exist? And we've answered most of these questions. And uh, we're really pleased to say that the need within the network has indeed been delivered. So in January this year, Catrev Creative was born. Uh, we organised a soft launch in Swansea, and it was great to see over 60 people in the room for the event. And uh, in all honesty, we didn't put that much work into promoting it. Uh, so with more resource, we're excited to see where it goes this year. And to summarise, what Cutter Creative is, uh, for those that don't know, is a community that's been developed within for the region. Uh, it's a network and a home for creatives. And we aim to create spaces, both digital and physical, uh, where creatives across the region can meet, they can socialise, they can learn, and we can collaborate. Uh, and as part of building a home, uh, we're building an online platform for our members, a place where everyone has their own creative profile, a space where we share articles that have been curated from within the membership. And our next steps are to host creative conversations across the region. Uh, we're going to be meeting in Llanelli in April, then Carmarthen, then Cardigan, then Neath, Swansea, and Pembrokeshire. And I would love to welcome anyone who wants to attend these events. Please join our mailing list. I'm going to put that information in the chat. And just lastly, Cut of Creative, a creative network by creatives for creatives. Read white creadigol, can pobal creadigol, ar gavel a probal creadigol, diolchichi. Yeah, well done. Amazing. And uh, Lee is a step ahead. Lee's already put the uh, Carter of Creative link in the chat. So sign up. So brilliant. Next, uh, just racing along with time, I'd love to introduce uh, Catherine Bolson. Now, she uh, is um, um, Marketing Events Manager for Plantasia Tropical Zoo, which is based in the heart of Swansea. Uh, so for those of you that don't know, Plantasia boasts over 40 different species of animals that live amongst lush, giant tropical flora. <laughs> the zoo is going from strength to strength and provides a magical setting for visitors of all ages to explore and enjoy. And Catherine, I'd love you to, um, you to unmute and uh, excited for you just to share with us now. Thank you, Catherine. Thanks, Odia. I just want to quickly talk to you actually about our creative event that we have happening at the zoo. Um, it takes place during the week of the May school holidays and it's called Plantasia in Bloom. It's a competition where schools and community groups create floral displays from materials that can be recycled. We then take these magnificent blooms, display them around the attraction and ask the visiting public, along with our panel of judges, to vote for their favourite bloom. There's two prizes up for grabs and the winners of each category receive a certificate, their name on the trophies and prizes from the event sponsors. Um, so following on from last month's For the Region session, I had the privilege of connecting with Morwenna from Swansea University. Morwenna mm -hmm. expressed interest in our competition and we're now eagerly crossing our fingers for the prospect of collaborating with Swansea Uni, um, potentially securing their sponsorship for prizes in support of this event. 
Um, but how you guys can get beyond, um, involved. So beyond the competition, there are still ample opportunities um, for you to engage. One of which is our education room that offers a lot of space for stands where you your businesses can showcase your offerings and environmental initiatives. We welcome during this period over 850 visitors daily. So it's an unparalleled chance to connect with a large family audience and foster meaningful conversations um, with them. Plantasium Bloom, it's not just competition, we see it as an opportunity for communities, businesses and schools to come together for a sustainable cause with the aim to inspire positive environmental action. Um, I hope I've covered enough to kind of get you yes. really inspired there and I'm going yes. to pop my contact details in the chat now. Yes, thank you. That's brilliant. And how amazing to hear that just off the back of last month's call, you were that this was the forum which you met with Moena and now have that collaboration um, started with Swansea University. So that's wonderful to hear. So the last of our little member moments is going to be from uh, Daniel Stavely. Now, Dan, he's here. He's Director of Business Development at the Elysium uh, based on High Street in Swansea. So Elysium, if you didn't know, has 100 studios uh, which local artists work from and uh, as well as its own music venue and gallery. Uh, it's certainly an impressive operation. Um, so Dan, if you'd care to uh, unmute yourself, uh, we'd love you to share for two minutes. Thank you so much. <coughs> okay, hello. Hi everyone. Um, yes, I'm just gonna keep it in a nutshell. We've got a very exciting year, um, Elysium. Uh, it's our 16th birthday in October. Um, last year, we applied for revenue funding from the Arts Council, and we successfully became one of their portfolio clients, which is absolutely amazing. So we got three years funding. So we're going to go mad. I've already put a deposit down on a Ferrari. So life's looking <laughs> good. Um, we've basically going to create jobs from that. So the opportunities, which is exciting from our point of view, is um, there's going to be at least three jobs created out of the Arts Council funding. We're just working everything out at the minute, so please keep your eye out uh, on LinkedIn and various different places. Um, it's going to be gallery assistant, various different job roles there. Uh, and then obviously we can secure some of the ones we've got as well uh, and work more with freelance artists. So that's one of the, of the opportunities that, uh, that Elysium is offering. And it's great because uh, I don't have to do everything, so which is brilliant. Um, also, I don't know if you've heard, uh, there's a building behind me here. So JT Morgan, the old super, uh, the old uh, retail development, uh, we're looking to get in there. We've put a bid in uh, through various different organisations for 3.4 million. So we've been putting everything into that one building. So the four of our studios uh, and different um, buildings will go in there. Um, it's not far from the Glyn Vivian, so it will be a little uh, creative hub next to the UWTSD as well. Um, we're going to be launching a community share offer uh, on the 7th of March. So if you are interested in supporting the arts, um, we're going to be floating on the community stock market. So you can come down to the event in the 7th of March um, to, uh, to have a word with me there. Uh, and also, yeah, I think that's it. Is that it? Really? Yeah. And we're also looking for directors as well. So if any directors or anyone out there who's got experience with big funding and big developments, please give us a shout because we are looking for uh, lots of help and expertise. Cool. Thank you so much. Yes, that was brilliant. Gosh, and please pop that in the chat, some of that stuff, Dan. Um, so lots of opportunities. Um, I'm just about to hand back over, but I just wanted to say just before I go, um, this opportunity to share is brilliant and we'd love to hear different little mini insights from members each month. Uh, another thing that I do as part of For the Region is I'm busy going out and about meeting members, going to where they work, bringing people together. Uh, you might have seen on our socials some videos where we go out and do exactly like that and bring to people together from the same sectors or cross sectors or from different places. Uh, and that's something I'm busy doing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop a little opportunity in the chat now. And if you would like to link in with me, if you're a member and you'd like to come along with me to meet some members um, to get involved, then we'd love to um, have you on board. That's my doorbell. <laughs> and uh, please just uh, reach out. I'm even going somewhere this Monday with Dean, and you'd be welcome to come too. Thank you so much. Back to you. 
Thanks, Lydia. Yeah, we're excited to see where these member road trips go. So do uh, take Lydia up on that option. If you'd like to host a visit or go on one with uh, Lydia, that's an opportunity for, for the region members. Um, and uh, yeah, Dan from Elysium also has a fantastic fly through of his uh, new vision, which hopefully will be shared soon. Uh, and we were delighted to help with that. Uh, when I say we, that was I create my 3D fly through company. So another example of great collaboration. Um, over to you, Zoe, for a very quick update from for the region before we uh, let people go. Thanks all. This has been a great conversation. Really, really appreciate it. If any of you aren't members of For the Region and wondering what an Earth member of For the Region means, we um, For the Region doesn't exist without the support of like-minded businesses and organisations from across the four counties who um, are financial contributors and supporters of the work that we do here in For the Region, whether that's a collaborator, ambassador or partner, we don't exist without the support of those um, organisations. If you'd like to become a member um, and be a supporter of For the Region, then Lydia would be happy to talk to you about that. Quick reminder that these monthly meetings happen on the third Thursday of every month here on the same Zoom link at one o'clock till half past two. Please join in any of those that you fancy attending. You know, this was particular conversation has been about um, the creative region. Next month, we're talking about the construction sector. You might think, well, why would I go to a construction sector conversation? Well, you never know. They might need creative, uh, might need creatives from the region to help them with a project or development. So please don't feel that, oh, that's not for me. We'd love to see you at any of our conversations. So that's the third Thursday of every month. Sign up and hopefully we'll see you at one of them. I hope it's been an interesting and insightful discussion and that you've picked up some useful nuggets of information, uh, met somebody new or had the opportunity to share something close to your own heart. Thanks so much for giving up your Thursday lunchtime to come and join us on these calls. We'll be back on the third Thursday of March, as Zoe says, talking about opportunities in South West Wales's construction sector. Um, and so we'll look forward to seeing you then. All that's left for me to do is thank you for coming. Please do unmute yourselves uh, and say goodbye and I will end the call in just a few moments. Thank you all very much. Thanks for coming. Bye for now. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. 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 Thanks so much. Bye. 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 Bye.